Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host here on the site to teach you how to play guitar mandolin. But this week is Banjo Week. We're going to do Home on the Range. This is a lot of fun because it's in the key of C and we're in waltz timing. So it's a little different than what we might be used to with Bluegrass Banjo. But I, I have to level with you. The point of this lesson is not just to learn Home on the Range. That's kind of an added bonus. Actually, the point of this lesson is to identify, learn how to identify a basic melody and then figure out what kind of roles, what kind of notes, what kind of harmony structures can we add to make it sound better. So this is kind of a build a break lesson. If you watched my build a break lessons before, we're going to have a lot of fun. If you're watching here on the site, you have everything you need, the rhythm track, the tabs, the full lesson there beneath you. If you're not watching on the site, I'd love for you to come on board. You can join as a Gold Pick member on the website and get access to hundreds of lessons. Let's jump right into Home on the Range. Before we dive into the actual solo, let's talk about the song just a little bit. A few things we need to know. First of all, it's in the key of C. You might not be used to playing out of C with no capo on the banjo. You need practice at that, so that's what we're going to do today. It does have a few more chords in it than our normal songs do that are in the key of C. It has that typical C, F, and G, but then it also has a two minor, a six minor, two major, and a four minor. We'll talk about those as we get there. They're not hard, but we need to know that they're there in order to know what notes to play that sounds good. The other thing that we need to keep in mind is that this is a waltz. It's in three, four. We're also not used to playing those on the banjo. So you've got to think about that a little bit. And finally, it's going so slow that we can break some of our traditional rules that we might have with three-finger banjo. So we can play the same string twice with one finger if we want, because it's not going that fast. And so we can kind of do what we want to on the banjo. We're not constricted with speeds and roll patterns, things of that nature. Okay, let's jump in. One thing you'll notice right off the bat is that some of the notes have little highlighted yellow squares over them. Those are the basic melody notes. So if we were to just play those, it would sound like Home in the Range. <laughs> So the question is, what other notes do we add? Well, we have a couple different ways to grab those notes. The most important one is to know what chords are being played by the guitar and the bass and all the other folks that are backing us up, because then we can know which chords to grab the rolls from on our banjo. So it's important that we know the, the roadmap for this song. And if we look at that first line, we have two measures of C. Oh, give me a home. And then two measures of F. Where the so if we combine that knowledge, C chord with an F chord, and then we also have some scales at our disposal, then we're good to go. So very, very close to the basic melody, isn't it? But there, there in measure four, you see that we played um, those two notes with our index finger. That's okay. We're going slow enough. I could almost play the whole song with one finger. So all of those notes in measures five and six are based out of that F chord. You see my hand's already down. So I'm not doing anything super hard. I'm just grabbing notes from other strings that are made out of the chord pattern that we're on. So we're on two measures of C, two measures of F. And, that's, and then I play my melody notes and grab some other notes around it. Now at the end of the line, I wanted to get these two notes. Now I could either do those single string, and it would sound fine, or I can borrow from my melodic knowledge, and get this position, three, five, three. Okay, so that's what I chose to do there. But I want you to watch, I'm gonna play the whole first line together, or all the way through. Watch how little my fret hand moves. And we're getting all of these melody notes. That's because we don't have to move. See, didn't do it. we didn't do very much because of the knowledge of what chords we're playing. Let's get into the next line. There's the basic melody. And then in measure nine, that melody note hangs out for two whole measures, so we can do all kinds of things there. But check out what we did. Measure seven, just the basic melody. Then I know we're going to an A minor. So I'm going to play that other A minor note. This is out of that A minor chord position. And then the D minor. Okay, so measures eight, nine, and 10, 
all that they contain are the melody notes, some other notes from the chord shape, and that's it. And you might say, well, which notes do I play out of the chord shape? Any of them you want. Make the chord and play some of the other strings. And then do it again, but pick different ones. And then ask yourself, which one of those sounded better? Which one do I like better? And that's how you build solos. As, and it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward here with these slower songs that have the chords that are changing like this. Um, but that's, it's, I just want you to see that it's not magic that we're doing. We're actually just using basic theory and um, picking some of those notes. Next line, melody goes like this. But our chords are going to do something a little different. We have one measure of C. But then measure 12, we have a C7. I don't have to do this, but I thought it would be really cool to grab that seventh tone. It's a B flat right there and work that in. Back to an F chord. And then our F minor looks like this. One, one, three. So I'm going to throw that in. So the whole line. Now, I'll give you a little tip. That very last third fret, I want you to jump up and play that with your index finger because that's part of our melodic pattern that we're going to use. You'll see that in the next line, measure 15. Okay, what happened there? Well, measure 15, we're just following the melody. Measure 16, our melody goes like this. But I'm just grabbing some fretboard geography notes beneath it to build some cool harmonies. If you haven't watched my fretboard geography lesson with Alan Mundy, you need to go watch that because he teaches us how to do that. And then we're just going to walk up to the chorus, okay? So what I want you to understand and what I always try to communicate in these build a break lessons is we have our basic melody. If you can't identify your basic melody, then you need to stop right there. And you need to work on that. Got our basic melody, and then we need to ask ourselves, what chords are being played? And do we know how to make those chords with our fret hand? And then once we learn how to finger the basic melody while also kind of covering those chords, then we can figure out where we're going to grab other notes from to make it sound cool, to beef it up a little bit. But beyond that, there's not a whole lot going on except just experience of learning what different notes sound like and which combinations you like. All right, so this is just a great opportunity to practice that with Home on the Range. If you're watching somewhere else beside the website, come on over. You can see the rest of this lesson, hundreds more. If you're already here on the site, let's go to the chorus, and then we'll play it all the way through slowly. Mm -hmm.